Hey guys, I know it's been a while. Uh, life kind of gets in the way. Uh, I'm still here. I'm still working on everything. Uh, this is kind of an update of what's going on. Um, I wanted to show you this and then I'll show you where I'm at on the QEG hybrid and we'll take it from there. This is something I was playing with. Uh, this I had this old reader which is an Adobe reader. This thing's a couple years old. It wouldn't take a charge conventionally. Uh, what I did is I wired, I opened it up and attached a wire to the battery. It's a lithium polymer battery, so it's not that old, but um, you know, I have a, a Google um, tablet, Nexus tablet, and um, I really don't have a use for this thing other than maybe put some technical papers on it. So I wanted to see if it would hold a charge uh, by pulse charging it. Well, I accidentally, I was charging it and I hit the button by mistake. And I, oh no, it's going to fry that thing. And to my surprise, it is pulsing the battery inside of this thing and it's operating. So go figure. I mean, I've had meters fry from the pulse, uh, but because this is only reading 3.8, you can't go too much. Uh, the polymer battery will heat up if I go much higher than that. But currently, the battery's actually taking a charge. I shut the motor off, and uh, it started blinking. And you can see right there, maybe you can't. But it's got the first bar, and um, it's basically operating off of the pulse motor, um, which I would have thought would have been impossible because it's pulsing. So the only reason I can imagine that this is working this well is the battery is absorbing the charge like a capacitor. So the capa the Batteries acting as a way to regulate the voltage in, even though it's basically connected at the battery. I'm bypassing the circuitry. Um, I'm not sure if it'll continue to work. And the ba the battery, I know where it is. And if the back starts to get warm, you know, lithium batteries are notorious for uh, bursting into flames. Polymers a little more. Um, robust than the ion batteries but I, I've been charging lithium batteries for a while now just to get an, a good idea of what's happening and uh, I'm able to charge them I can't go too much above the voltage or I'll damage the battery now, right now this is charging but it's also using the power to operate the device which is a new thing for me so I just wanted to show you that, you know, it's not much. It's an old junky tab uh, reader that's probably not worth 20 bucks, so nothing gained, nothing lost. But um, it's pretty slick that the thing can actually operate with the pulse motor pulsing the battery while it's operating. Um, I just thought somebody out there experimenting with this stuff would want to know that. So basically, it's running at the lowest speed possible on that pulse motor. So, and now the other thing. Now, the QEG hybrid, it's come a long way since my last post, but I've been trying to work this out. Now, I've had it up to 100 volts, uh, I haven't got the bulbs to light. I think my biggest issue is the size of the core is so small that it's real finicky. I got it up to 100 volts and the thing collapsed. The, the voltage just collapsed. So whether or not this is going to work like the QEG, I'm really not sure at this point. I've got a lot more experiments to do. I put a high voltage probe on it. It's externally grounded. I have a heat heating element to dissipate the caps which are in this right here. I showed you how to create these caps and I've got three of them connected in series and then the, seri the three connected in series are in parallel. So it's only rated at 6,000 volts for each one of these. 
I could hook it up 612 if I wanted to but basically this is just a way to test this stuff without worrying about damaging some valuable equipment so um, it's got the step down transformer on it and let me show you here what's happening this is the DC motor and this is reading the amps on the motor and this is reading the volts the DC volts on the motor now I used a big cap to catch the back EMF which stopped it from heating up the negative wire um, so that was resolved this is a motor out of an actually out of a lawn mower it's a 120 volt motor hang on a minute I'm gonna shut this off I don't want to actually have it blow up in the background so okay and this is the DC um, This is the high voltage meter. This is for that. And I'm not even going to worry about that right now. But what I did do, and I might have actually damaged it, but I wrapped a high, um, a large uh, wire, magnet wire, in the front and back of each one of these. And it's wired in the same direction as the core which would give me a secondary that hopefully I can just at the very least be able to read voltage off of. Um, the problem with this high voltage probe is when you're in the lower scale before it energizes it don't really work that well so it's not useful unless it's already operating at you know 6,000 volts or so. So I, I tried this. I might have actually damaged it. I'm not sure. You know, this is just recovered wire and it's not rated for what I'm doing. So it's, like I said, it's just an experiment to figure out if I can combine this technology of a, of a AC induction generator into a QEG configuration. So I'm really not worried if I damage any of this. I might have been a little too hazardous with it, but uh, anyway, I'm going to show you. I'll, I'll run it, and I haven't been getting a voltage. Uh, I've got to reconfigure the caps and verify I haven't damaged the caps, and it's really hard to know if you get a short on your wires unless it's a dead short. Now, if it's just a nick on the wire and it gets a higher voltage and then it shorts out, that's a little harder to find sometimes so there, there are a lot of things you have to overcome here <laughs> to get this to work the way you might want it to work out of the gate but um let's see so you can see right here seven volts one amp so the way this motor is configured it's only running a few amps, so. It's only drawing two amps at 97 volts. I don't want it to actually energize right now, but I want to show you what's going on. So, that's kind of where I'm at. I've still got a lot of experiments to try with this unless I've actually damaged it hopefully not but uh, that's kind of where it's at we got a spark gap down here and a way to dissipate the energy uh, so I can work on the cat box so that's kind of where that's at right now and if I have some actual results that I'm pleased with I will be posting it guys I don't hold none of this stuff back never have don't plan on it. I'll always post it and let you know what's going on. Now, because I did get a good response in the beginning, I believe this is possible to make this work like a QEG. Now, the core being a half an inch wide, that could be an issue. So, what I'm doing is this. This is a three horsepower, uh, was a three horsepower motor, and 
because my windings are similar to that, they will be wound this direction and each one of these is a phase. So you alternate the direction you're winding the, based on these little fins on your AC motor. That way uh, you can group them together, tie them together at the end and generate the power you want. Now I plan on putting a secondary on this down here at the bottom. So this is going to have grouped windings that will be in the thousands of turns just like the QEG. But um, this is going to be driven by the, the new pulse motor, the large pulse motor you guys probably have seen the videos on. Um, the new pulse motor is it's got 32 magnets and it runs in a north-south configuration. Uh, it's very efficient. I'm basically changing the design right now and I will be mounting it back on the cart when I get it done. But basically it's these rings with the bar running across it. You can see there's all my uh, coils for the motors. <laughs> and uh, I think this is going to be interesting. I plan on using these um, control chips from CRTs. They're rated at 20 amps at 1600 volts I think it might be less than that I'm not sure but basically the energy coming from the motor is going to hit this toroid this is one ohms and two ohms this is from a step uh, converter that converts from 110 to 240 at 50 hertz um, so what I want to do is run out of the motor in the pulse side through this uh, toroid then go back to ground in the same set of batteries then that'll uh, isolate the current on the secondary and then the secondary is going to go to a capacitor which will be dumped back into the primary I might try to hook it up direct uh, to drive the motor I don't know I don't know what kind of voltage I'm going to get but I wanted to give you guys kind of an update of what's going on. So uh, coil winders, I haven't had time to work on it, but uh, I will be finishing the coil winder, which you see back there, so I can wind this. Now, this principle that we're using here, this is uh, just like an AC induction generator. Only difference is you are breaking that... Uh, magnetic field that's generated by it being wound through here which directs the magnetic field this way by wrapping it like this you're driving that magnetic field around the ring just like a QEG and um, that pretty much should be the key because this thing it made power at 500 rpm it made 240 volts at 500 RPM. But at the moment it energized, uh, it became a three horsepower motor that I had to overcome the torque being generated from this motor being energized. So I'm hoping this will uh, allow me to um, tap that energy without uh, generating that torque uh, that all generators suffer from when they're under load um, the wires become a magnetic field even ones that don't have a metal core become a magnetic field and they tend to then latch onto the magnets and drag the whole thing down so you know it's never easy guys <laughs> what can I say you do what you can do the best you can do and let everybody know so Maybe somebody else will have another idea to contribute. That's what open source is all about. So that's kind of where we're at. And yes, the tablet shut off. Let's see if it shut off because... Nope. Okay. All right. Well, that battery didn't take a charge. It wouldn't charge. Doing it this way, it is charging. So 
I guess that's all I got for now. Look for some more videos soon. I have been shooting some stuff, but I haven't had time to edit anything. And until I have any something groundbreaking, it's uh, really ridiculous to try to post and while I'm doing the research. So for now, this is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel signing out. Thank you.